Hello everyone and thanks for coming to my talk. I'm sorry I can't be there in person, but due to the hurricane Sandy hitting the east coast of the United States, it was impossible for me to get to Maui. I am very thankful to the general chair, to the local chair, to the program chair and to the session chair for allowing me to present my talk into in this uh, video format. Again, I'm very sorry and if you have any question about my work or my presentation, please send me an email. I'll try to reply as soon as possible, even today, if you want. In our work, we develop an algorithm to extract an approximation of the collection of frequent item set and association rules from large data set using the MapReduce framework of computation. The motivation for this talk should be familiar to most of you. It's market basket analysis. So suppose that you own a grocery store and at the end of the day, you want to know what products your customer more often bought together and also more interesting questions like, given that a customer bought uh, some pair of products like peer and chips together, what other product is she most likely to buy together with peer and chips? Because this information can help you making business decisions and maximize your revenue. Formally, we have a transactional data set that we denote with the letter D. Um, it's built on transactions, so each of these lines is a transaction, and transactions are built on items, that is, the items that you, the product that you sell in your grocery store, and sets of items are called item sets. Some more definition, given an item set X, we define the frequency of the item set X as the fraction of transaction of the data set that contains this item set, and we also define uh, association rules as an expression involving two item sets X and Y, and this expression basically suggests the coherence of X and Y in the same set of transactions. And we can define the frequency uh, as the frequency of the union of the items of X and Y, and the confidence that is basically how much we trust this transaction. Given these settings, the problems we are interested in involve extracting um, sets of item sets or sets of association rules from the data set. More precisely, given our minimum frequency threshold theta, we want to extract all the item sets that have frequency at least theta, and this is the set of frequent item sets. There are variants of this problem for top k frequent item sets and for association rules, but in this talk we focus only on the set of frequent item sets, although everything that we say can be extended to top k and to the association rules problem, and the details are in the paper. There are exact, exact algorithms to mine the, the collection of frequent item sets, both sequential, like a priori and the growth, and parallel, like for example in the MapReduce framework of computation, the PFP algorithm. Um, both the sequential and the parallel algorithm suffer from uh, similar drawbacks. The sequential algorithm need to scan the data set multiple times, while the parallel algorithms need to um, occur, occur in a, a large uh, data replication and communication between the machines in order to parallelize the computation. Now, this makes these algorithms very expensive for large data sets because disk access is very slow and network communication in a distributed setting, parallel setting, network communication is even slower. So the question that we ask is whether we can uh, obtain a high quality approximation in a much more efficient way. We start from this very simple observation that data mining is really exploratory in nature. And we don't usually need the exact results, but instead we really want a good realistic idea of the process that generates the data in order to understand what the process is. Um, so fast analysis, fast analysis is usually much more important than exact result, at least as long as fast analysis guarantees good enough results. So the goal of our algorithm are the following. We want to extract a high quality approximation of the collection of frequent item sets by mining several small samples of the data set in parallel rather than looking at the entire data set. We want to be able to do that and while adapting to the available computational resources and while exploiting them, but at the same time we want to minimize data replication and communication because they are very expensive. All this while achieving a high level of parallelism. So let me formalize what I mean by high quality approximation. We will have a parameter epsilon and we want to have to a set of pairs of item set and estimation of the frequency of the item set such that 
all the items that are the frequency higher or at least as high as the minimum frequency threshold, they must be in the output. And no items that have a frequency lower than, uh, much lower than the minimum frequency threshold that is lower than theta minus epsilon can be in the output. We also want all the estimation of the frequency to be close to the real frequency of the item set that is close within epsilon. And we call an output a collection of items that satisfy this condition an epsilon approximation. And this is basically a superset of the original collection of uh, frequent item sets. At the core of Parma, at the core of our algorithm, there is a previous work that we introduced and was presented at PKDD 2012 last month. It uh, gives us a method to compute with probability at least one minus delta an epsilon approximation of the collection of frequent item set using a single random sample of the data set. And the good thing is that the sample size is, uh, um, depends only on global characteristics of the data set, that is the H index, and on epsilon and delta, but it's independent from the size of the data set, so that the sample fit, can fit into main, the main memory of the machine. And also the algorithm is very simple. We create the sample um, using, uh, using the bound to the sample size and using random sampling with a replacement, and we extract um, the collection of frequent item sets from the sample using a lowered frequency threshold that is using theta minus epsilon half rather than theta. So given that we have this very efficient sequential algorithm, one may ask why we even want to parallelize it. Uh, the motivation for this is that uh, even if you want to get a very high quality approximation, the sample will still be large and may not fit into the main memory of the machine, but also that the sample creation time actually depends on the size of the data set because we have to scan the entire data set. So what parallelization, parallelization allows us to achieve is a higher confidence, higher accuracy, and faster result. And also parallelization makes a lot of sense when the data set is stored on a distributed file system, as it's usually the case for very large data sets. So let me now introduce MapReduce. MapReduce is a framework for parallelizing um, algorithms on large cluster of commodity machines. It was introduced by Google in 2004 and allows very fast analysis of large data sets. Algorithms of, in MapReduce are expressed through two functions, the map function and the reduce function. So let's see the input as a sequence of key value pair, pairs. Uh, the map takes a single key value pair and output a multiset of key value pairs based on the input pair. The reduce function instead um, takes as input a key R and a set of values that are basically all the values that were produced by the math function with associated key R. And also the reduce function um, output a multi-set of key value pairs. Uh, the good thing of these two functions is that they are uh, very easily parallelizable because the math function can be executed in parallel for each pair of in, in input and the reduce function can be executed in parallel basically for each different key in uh, the output of the map function. So, but the problem of MapReduce is that it's very expensive to move data around between the map and the reduce function in that phase that they usually call shuffling. So the real goal for the algorithm designer should be to avoid data replication as much as possible because the more data would just mean more data to send around and to move around the machines. And so a more expensive um, shuffling phase that will in a, a longer time for to execute the to execute the algorithm. As I said earlier, one of the goal of our algorithm is to um, exploit as much as possible computational resources whilst to respect them. So we have two constraints really. The sample each sample should fit into the local memory of each machine, and we cannot have more sample to mine the number of processors. Um, and we want to exploit the available computational resources in order to maximize the quality of the approximation that we can get. So given these constraints and this optimization function, we can formalize them as a mixed integer nonlinear program. And the good thing is that uh, there is a convex visibility region and a convex objective function. So this is, is very easy and fast to solve using a global uh, MINLPL uh, solver. We are now ready to introduce our algorithm, Parma. It has a very simple design and it works in two MapReduce rounds. In the first round or first stage, 
we first create the samples in a math function and then uh, mine each sample in parallel in the reduce. Uh, in the second round, uh, using the uh, locally um, frequent item set collection that we obtained the first round, we pass them directly to the reducer using an identity function in the map, and then we aggregate and filter these results in parallel in the reduce function, and eventually we output a, a global collection of frequent item set or um, association rules. So let me give you more details about how Pharma works. So in the first round, in the first stage, we do sampling and mining. And we basically parallelize the sequential algorithm I told you about earlier. So in the map uh, phase, we create the sample using random sample with replacement in parallel. So the input of the map function is a transaction ID and the transaction as key value pair. And what we output is for each transaction um, a pair uh, or multiple pairs that um, tell us which samples uh, this transaction belongs to. So uh, there is a sample ID and the transaction again, and so the transaction is sent to the corresponding samples. In the reduced step is that we mine each sample that we created in parallel using a lower minimum frequency threshold, theta minus epsilon half, as we did in the uh, sequential algorithm. And we can use any sequential algorithm we want, a priori of growth or whatever else. So the input of the reduce function is uh, um, the sample ID and the list of transactions. And the output instead will be the collection of uh, locally frequent uh, uh, item sets. So item sets that are frequent in this sample um, store as, a, as the item set you, and together with a frequency estimation and a confidence interval of the frequency estimation. So the second phase is really the most interesting part of the algorithm. So the map function is just the identity function, so the, what the work all happens in the reduce function, where we do filtering and aggregation of the local collection of frequent type sets that were computed in the uh, previous phase, in the, in the first stage. So the input of each uh, reducer is an item set together with all the frequency estimation for that item set, for that item set in the local um, frequent collection of frequent items that were computed before and their confidence interval. And the output will be the item set with a single frequency estimation and a single confidence interval. So we will have one reducer for each item set that appear in the um, in the uh, in at least one of the uh, locally frequent uh, um, collection of frequent item sets. Uh, uh, but in output, uh, an item set is set in output only if it was frequent in a sufficient number of samples. So only if it appears in a sufficient number of locally frequent, uh, um, of local frequent item sets. And computing how much, how much, how many of these, uh, uh, of many samples the item set should appear in, in is uh, uh, done using the optimization framework and using the probabilistic analysis of our algorithm. The confidence interval is computed by um, computing the uh, smallest interval that contains a sufficient number of estimation from the local frequent uh, uh, items of collection, and the estimation of the frequency will be just the median of the confidence interval. So the, the real hard part is uh, um, proving that uh, um, computing the confidence interval in this way uh, is the right thing to do and that the frequency will respect the properties that we want. But it's also pretty difficult to merge um, the, the result and, uh, of the, of, from the lo local frequent uh, um, item set collection and to understand how much exa how many ex exactly how many samples um, the items that should be frequent in in order to be declared uh, globally frequent. The analysis of our algorithm is the following. With probability at least 1 minus delta, the output of Parma is an epsilon approximation to the collection of frequent items in the data set. And just to give you an intuition of what the proof is, uh, it's basically a boost like approach. Um, the output of the reducer at stage 1, this collection of locally frequent uh, item sets, are epsilon approximation for each of the local samples, with some probability 1 minus 3. And if an item that appears in enough epsilon approximation from the stage one, then it's much pro it's probably that it's frequent in the data set in general. So it's globally frequent, and we can send it in the output. 
As a consequence of um, this uh, um, parallelization of pharma, we get a better approximation and much fewer false positives because the probability that um, we get a false positive in one of the sample uh, can be high, but given that in order to be sent in output, it must appear in many uh, local samples, uh, this probability is very low, and so we can filter it out. We implemented Parma as a Java library for the Apache Hadoop uh, um, software, which makes it uh, easy to run and uh, allow possible integration with Apache Mahout, a collection of machine learning and data mining uh, uh, algorithms for Hadoop. We used FP Growth for the sample mining phase in the first stage, but Parma is agnostic to the choice of money algorithm, and we just use an existing Java implementation. Uh, in total, it's uh, about 1,400 lines of code, and it's available on, on GitHub uh, if you want to, to look at it or modify it. We ran our experimental evaluation of Pharma on the Amazon Elastic MapReduce framework using up to 16 machines with a, a huge amount of RAM. Uh, in order to test the, alg the algorithm, we create artificial data set using uh, standard benchmark generators because there weren't such large data sets available uh, publicly. Uh, and we, use, we varied the parameters to generate these data sets, like the transaction size and the number of item sets, and the size went between 5 and 50 million of transactions. Um, we were um, very interested in comparing the performances of Parma with PFP, which is the, uh, currently the standard or the best performing algorithm for uh, mining association rules and frequent item sets in MapReduce, and also to the naive distributed counting algorithm. And we found that Parma performs significantly better than both of them from 1.5 to 5 times better in speed in all tests that we conducted. As you can see from the uh, bottom left figure on the bottom line, the runtime of Parma doesn't grow as the data set grows. That's because the individual sample size doesn't grow. And so we basically mine always the same amount of data. Parma is always also much faster than PFP, and it gets faster as data grows because PFP has to look at, at the entire data set. You can also see from the lower um, right figure that Parma gets faster with more machine, even with more data. So we kept the uh, ratio between the number of machines and the amount of data constant, and we can see that there is a um, um, huge improvement in speed as this, this, uh, the amount of data and the amount of machine goes up. This leads us to the speedup analysis. Uh, Parma is a quasi-linear speedup, uh, although this is mostly thanks to the uh, stage one, uh, which is very close to optimal, as we can see from the, um, from the bottom figure, the, the top line, uh, while stage two basically has no speedup at all, because its running time depends on the number of items sets that we find, and there is really no way that the algorithm designer um, can control, which we can control the, this number of items. And this dependency on the running time of the number of items set is actually common in frequent item set mining, uh, mining algorithms, for example, also a priori suffer from this uh, same uh, drawback. But still, we can achieve um, quasi linear speed up. Let me now talk about uh, the accuracy result, experimental result of Parma. So the output was always an epsilon approximation to the real collection of frequent item sets not just with probability 1 minus delta, and we conducted hundreds of, of runs to test this. Um, the output is not much larger than the real collection, that is, there are very few uh, false positives, and again, there are no false negatives. And we also achieve a much better frequency accuracy, a much better estimation of the accuracy of the single frequent item set than what is guaranteed uh, on the analysis. As you can see from the uh, lower uh, left uh, um, figure, Basically, we, have, we achieve a uh, 1 or 2, two um, bet, um, order of magnitude better approximation than what is guaranteed. And the same also holds for confidence intervals that are much smaller than what is guaranteed, because really all the frequencies in the uh, local samples, all the frequency estimation in the local sample are very close to the real frequency. And so when we go to compute the confidence interval, we get a very small um, confidence interval for, for the global uh, frequency estimation and for the global uh, frequency interval. So in conclusions, what we did is to 
uh, develop an algorithm for the MapReduce framework of computation to mine an high quality approximation of the frequent item set and of the association rules of a large data set with minimum data replication and quasi linear speed up. The difficult part was basically integrating and merging and filtering the results from uh, many different, from the mining of many different uh, random samples of the data set into a single collection that we will then uh, send in output. And we do this using an optimization framework and using uh, a probabilistic analysis of our algorithm. Thanks again for coming to my talk. I'm sorry that I couldn't come to Maui and present this in person. If you have any questions, please send them to my email address, matteo at cs.brown.edu. Thanks. Have a good day.